All right. Um, thank you, Bernard. Thank you, um, everyone, for for tuning in. I'm Alan. I'm you know happy to be here, you know, despite virtually, um, to tell you about the crisis of expertise. Now, let me just begin by um, you know uh, stating that in my in many markets, uh, a key role of experts is to give advice to guide decisions. Nonetheless, in recent years. Um, popular discussions has been pointing to uh, the phenomenon that technology has led to a crisis of expertise by making you know, information abundant and publicly accessible. And a common description of the crisis is that um, decision makers, they dismiss genuine advice that informed experts offer. And they act solely on the basis of public information, say from social media. Um, now, this phenomenon raises a few important questions. First, how does the crisis affect the value of genuine informed experts? Now, this question has an important implications because it's going to affect not only resource, the answer to this not only affect um, uh, resource allocations, but also uh, perhaps people's incentives to invest in acquiring expertise. The second important question is, well, is the crisis actually due to the abundance of public information? And if so, are decision makers simply substituting high quality public information for expertise? Well, again, these questions have important implications um, for how we, we're gonna value expert advice in the future as technology um, makes more and more information available and, and of higher quality. All right. so. Um, the goal of this paper um, is to address these two questions, and I'm going to do this in a um, simple framework of, of expert advice where decision makers, they take actions to match an evolving state of the world after assessing two pieces of relevant information. The first is um, the current expert advice, and second is the public information, which consists of past pieces of advice that the expert offers and past action outcomes by other decision makers. Now, to, you know, it would be good to keep the following example in mind when um, to interpret the model as we, as we proceed. So imagine that the, the decision makers, they are firms. They are um, raising capital to fund either safe or risky projects. And the state of the market varies over time. It could be fear or greed. Now, a project succeeds even only if it receives enough funds from investors. And hence, in a fearful market, the firms should be picking a safe project. And in a greedy market, the firms should be picking a risky project. All right, and the firms are not sure about you know, the state of the market, and hence they, they, they turn to a, a financial expert for help. OK. Now, to give you a brief um, overview of what we are going to, 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 to see in the next hour um, is you know, two key uh, insights. First is that public information, they, not, they um, do not only help decision makers to learn, but they also help fake experts to spring to life at the expense of the decision makers. And um, this is going to trigger a crisis of the expertise at times. All right, nonetheless, I'm gonna show you that this crisis are short run phenomena. And so over time, uh, the chance of crisis happening dissipates. And so the, the damage on the informed experts payoff is going to be limited. And a perhaps striking prediction of the, of the model is going to be that the crisis only happens or crisis happens only when public information has lower quality. So if, if anything, it is not because of the abundance, but rather the lack of high quality public information. And with this results, we are, I'm going to talk about, you know, um, policy implications for alleviating the crisis. Now, I would love to, you know, if you're interested, I would love to talk, tell you more about the literature at the end of the talk. But in the interest of time, let me just mention that the uh, paper is most closely related to the literature on reputational chip talk and uh, more broadly on the literature on expert reputation and also in a, to a recent literature on how we screen experts. 
All right, so with this introduction, let me now um, uh, describe the model so that we have, we have a framework to actually you know, concretely think about the problem. All right, so now the setup is as follows. So time is going to be continuous. There's going to be an infinite horizon um, and the time is indexed by T. There is a um, hidden state of the world that evolves as a Markov process. And there's going to be two states. So either a high state or a low state. For simplicity, let's, let's assume that um, the initial state is high and the switching rate uh, is symmetric. So the switching rate is the rate at which the state changes from one to the other. Now mapping back to the, to the capital raising example, um, one state is where the, the, the market is you know, uh, greedy. The other state is when the, uh, the market is fearful. And they evolves randomly over time. And there will be two parties. Um, there will be a long-lived expert. And this expert has a private type. She's either informed with some probability P0 or uninformed with complementary probability. There's also going to be a kind of a sequence of principles and each of them is short-lived. So they enter once they act and go. Um, the arrival of these principles is going to follow a Poisson process. Uh, and for simplicity, the, the uh, intensity of the Poisson process is normalized to one. Okay, and the state, the type, and arrival, you know, all these random processes and variables here, they are independent. All right, now the timing then is as follows. When a, whenever a principle arrives at some time t, the following unfolds. First, the principle is going to pay the expert a wage upfront. Now both players take the wage as given and the wage is assumed to be equal to the principle's um, marginal gain from consulting the expert. Now, of course, this marginal gain is going to be determined in equilibrium as an equilibrium object. So in the few slides, I'm going to come back to this um, and, and formalize what I meant by a wage. After receiving the wage, the expert sends the principle a message from the set of, and the message is drawn from the set of states. So the message has an interpretation about, you know, the expert's report on the current state. Then the um, principal takes an action, hoping to match the state. And in particular, if the principal's action matches the state, he gets a benefit of one. And if the action doesn't match the state, he gets a benefit of negative one. All right, and um, the payoffs in each rifle, while the expert uh, here only cares about the, the wage that, uh, that she gets from the principal. The principal, on the other hand, cares about the benefit that he derives from the action minus the wage that he pays the expert. The expert discounts um, you know, flow payoffs at, this, at, at, at rate R. Now, in terms of information that the parties have in each time t arrival of the principal, the expert acquires a private signal Y before sending um, a report or well, before sending a message. And the informed type's signal perfectly reviews the current state. On the other hand, the uninformed type signal is pure noise. All right, so the informed type signal is going to be valuable for the principal, but, but the uninformed type signal is not. Um, on the other hand, the action, message, and benefit are public. All right, and so in the, at the end of the arrival, when the benefit is realized, the state is um, publicly reviewed be, be, because principal can, can, principals can back out the benefit, uh, they can back out the state given the benefit and the action. So if you map it back to um, the, the capital raising example, if a firm you know, picks a risky project and the project succeeds, then um, everyone can, can, can see that now the, the state must be greedy. 
Alan, okay. we, we have yes. a question from Larry White. Larry, uh, could you unmute your mic? Perfect. Uh, just quickly, you know, you had the payoffs being completely symmetric, uh, and your example of the investment and the greedy, uh, et cetera, I would have thought the payoffs would be uh, asymmetric for the non-matching outcomes. Right. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and how how crucial is the symmetry of uh, of outcomes? I mean, if if it's a risky world, uh, uh, and I do a safe in investment, gee, I may have a little bit of regret. But uh, if it's you know, it, it's, it just seems like uh, the Im imposed symmetry may not really resonate? Um, good question. I mean, this is a good point. Um, it's not going to be too important. So uh, the insights is going to qualitatively carry over. Uh, I have negative one and one here because it simplifies my algebra. Um, but the insights is going to be you know, qualitatively carried through, as you, can, as you will see in the equilibrium analysis. But thank you for the, for the question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Does that, okay, any? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. Um, all right, then now at the end of this information slide, though, basically this concludes the description of the fundamentals of the model. Let me now move on to, you know, describe histories and strategies, you know, just to formalize the game. Now, a public history of some length is basically a list consisting of the past arrival times, the associated messages, actions, and benefits at those times, all right? And a type theta expert's um, private history of, of, the, of the same length is basically consisting of the public history and the past private signals that the, history, that the expert obtains, all right? And so the expert strategy um, well, it's basically a collection indexed by the time and by, by time t. And so that each such strategy uh, indexed by t is basically a function that draws a message that the expert is going to send in the arrival at time t, given her private history and the current signal that she obtains. All right. On the other hand, the principal's strategy is to pick an action in, the, in his arrival, given the public history and the message that he receives. All right, and because the principle is short-lived, he um, uh, myopically optimizes and, and he's going to derive an optimal benefit that, that I denote by B star, okay, as a function of the history at H and message M. And um, in a model, if whenever the principle is indifferent, it is without loss to assume that he's, he just chooses an action that matches the last state, namely the last reviewed state, because his action is not going to affect the future principle's information and, uh, and um, the, you know, the expert's visual information and wages. Okay. Now, what is the crucial building block of the analysis? Um, is beliefs of the expert and also of the principles. So let's first look at the uninformed expert's belief. Now, the uninformed expert forms a belief at each time about the state. And we can describe this state belief as a belief that the current state equals the last reviewed state. And um, because of the uh, Markovian transition, Markov property, the state belief is literally a function of the um, time lapse. L since the last state is reviewed, as well as the volatility or the switching rate gamma of the state process. And it's described you know, here and that I denote by mu L. Now, if we want to plot this, what is this? So this is um, the function mu L, the belief mu L as a function of the time lapse L. So you can see when the time lapse is very small, when it's very close to zero, so the last state is reviewed you know, a split second ago. The uninformed expert is pretty sure that the state is still the same. And so the belief is very close to one. But over time, the expert thinks that, well, 
the state could have more is more likely to have changed, and hence this belief falls and converges to one half. And so an important property of this belief is no matter how long the time lapse is, the um, uh, the uninformed expert always thinks that the current state is more likely to be equal to the last state than is different from it. All right, and not surprisingly, if we increase the volatility from you know gamma equals one to gamma equals two, um, the belief falls faster because the uninformed expert thinks that the state is more volatile. All right, now. Let's turn to the informed expert's belief. Again, the informed expert forms a belief about the, you know, the current state is equal to the last state. And if there's an arrival, the informed expert gets a signal about the state, which is perfectly revealing. Then the informed, and hence the informed expert's state belief is just zero or one. On the other hand, absent the principal's arrival, the informed expert does not get a signal and hence her, her belief is just like the, the uninformed expert state belief. And it's mu L, depending on the time-lapse L. Finally, at each time, um, the arriving principle, he forms belief on two things, right? He has to form belief on the expert's type and also the current state being equal to the last state. And hence this belief can be described you know, by a pair P mu. So P is the reputation or the belief that the expert is informed, and mu is the state belief that the current state is equal to the last state. All right, and throughout, um, I'm going to refer to this pair p mu as the public beliefs because they are determined given the the public history. All right. So um, to complete my description of the model, let me and to ease my you know my exposition, I'm going to call, you know, I'm going to, to, to make the following um, terminology. So in each arrival, I'm going to say that a message or an action is correct if it equals the current state and is incorrect otherwise. Likewise, I'm going to call a message or an action agreeing if it equals the last state and disagreeing otherwise. Now, what do I mean by agreeing? I'm, I, what I mean is agreeing with respect to the public state belief that the current state is more likely to equal the last state. All right, and so um, to, be, to be sure, because the state is randomly evolving over time, a correct message need not be agreeing. And likewise, an incorrect message need not be disagreeing. Okay, now, so let's, let's now formally define you know, wages. And as mentioned, a wage by the principal is just his expected marginal benefit of receiving advice. From the expert. And how is this marginal benefit determined? Well, given the strategy of the expert and the public history age with some, you know, with an associated time lapse since the last state is reviewed, the uh, principal who comes in is going to think, well, if I'm going to take an action absent expert advice, I'm going to choose the agreeing action because, because the public state believes that the agreeing action is more likely to be correct. This is going to give me this um, uh, benefit or you know, my reservation payoff effectively. Now, on the other hand, if I'm going to choose an action given the public history H and the current message M, this is going to be, you know, this B star is going to be my benefit. And of course, when I pay the expert, I do not know uh, what message the expert is going to send. And hence, I'm going to form an expectation about what messages the expert is going to send um, according to the strategy profile conditional on the public history age. Okay, and this is my marginal benefit from receiving advice for the, for the principal. And each expert type theta is basically you know, choosing a strategy of reporting the states over time to maximize revenue. All right, and this revenue is, you know, uh, with respect to, of course, the, the, the uh, arrival process NT of the principles. Okay, Alan, so to a, yes. Alan, there's a, a quick clarifying question from Benson. Mm -hmm. He's wondering if there's only one infinitely lived expert. And, and if yes, does the result where the crisis is short lived depend crucially on that? 
Um, okay, so yes, first, so the first answer is yes, there's, there's one single long-lived expert. And second, I'm going to define the crisis formally as, you know, uh, whether the principle, as, as a phenomenon where the, uh, uh, the pr principles dismiss the informed expert advice. And hence, um, in this sense, yes. So it depends on, you know, one single informed expert. But I can also, I can also um, imagine that we can extend uh, this definition to allow for multiple experts and the risk and, and, and so um, the, the, the short run nature of the crisis will carry over. But uh, for the moment, you know, I'm gonna, you know, defer, you know, um, further, you know, a further response to this question because it's gonna be clearer when, when I formally define uh, what I mean by a crisis. Thank you. Okay. All right. So to complete the description of the, of the, of the game, um, the solution concept I'm gonna use is um, perfect basin equilibrium, satisfying, you know, two properties. The first one is that on path, the informed type reports her state observation truthfully. Now this property is going to allow us to focus on you know, the first key motivating question uh, where we wanna understand um, how you know, given public information, how principles value the genuine informed expert advice. All right, and the second um, property is that, you know, uh, base rule does not apply when beliefs are degenerate of path. And so we have to have some assumption uh, that, that pins down beliefs, uh, such beliefs, all right? And so uh, property two takes care of this. Specifically, if the expert's reputation is degenerate and then she, and she sends a message that is inconsistent with the strategy, then the re expert's reputation becomes zero. All right, the analysis actually can extend, easily extend to allowing for other off-path beliefs, but this is the one that we are going to uh, stick with. And even if we allow for other off-path beliefs, the, the insights will carry over. All right, so, um, so this, this is the, um, the end of the model. So um, what I'm gonna do next is that, you know, I'm gonna turn to equilibrium analysis and given the results in analysis, you know, um, we're going to look at implications, which is going to, you know, uh, address the motivation, motiv motivating questions in the beginning. All right. All right. So, because in in uh, we are looking for equilibria in which the informed expert reports truthfully, much difficulty is to you know is to characterize then uh, the uninformed expert's equilibrium payoff and behavior because the set of strategies is large. And so what I'm gonna do first is that I'm gonna pin down the equilibrium properties that the uninformed types payoff and behavior must satisfy. First, the, in terms of payoffs, the uninformed types payoff at the end of each arrival is actually just a function of the resulting reputation P. So I call it VUP and it is strictly increasing in the reputation. And when the reputation is zero, the uninformed types pay off with zero. Now this is very um, intuitive in, because in a model, only the informed expert's knowledge is valuable to the principles. And hence, if the, and, and, and hence the incentives of the uninformed type is to pool with the informed type. And if, if the uninformed type is doing a better job, giving her a high reputation, you know, she's better off. And of course, when the reputation is zero, if everyone knows that the expert is uninformed, then uh, principals think that you know, the, the expert is not valuable to, uh, at all. And so uh, the value of the expert is zero. In terms of behavior then, in each arrival, the uninformed type strategy is Markov in the public beliefs P mu. But why is this Markov in these public beliefs? Well, in each arrival, the uninformed type is going to think of, you know, when, when the uninformed type determines what message to send, the uninformed type is going to think, well, whether this message is going to be correct. And this is pinned down by the state belief mu. And second, the uninformed type is going to think, well, whether this is going to give me the, uh, uh, what, what reputation this is going to lead to. 
at the end of the of, of the arrival because that's that's going to pin down my my future payoff. And given her strategy, or given you know the 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 uh, her strategy, uh, this resulting reputation is pinned down by the current reputation p, and hence the strategy is just Markov in these two beliefs. Moreover, because there are only two states um, in each arrival, we can just take the uninformed expert strategy to be a, a probability of sending the agreeing report. Okay, and um, moreover, you know, if the in, an informed expert sends an incorrect report, her reputation is going to go to zero. Why is that? Well, uh, because the informed expert is is, is reporting truthfully and principals expect that. So principals expect that the informed experts messages are always correct. And hence one incorrect message is gonna reveal that the expert is uninformed, okay? Now with this, um, on the other hand, if we fix any uninformed type strategy, the informed expert has no profitable deviation from AAA reporting. Why is that? Well, again, if the, if, the, if the informed type deviates from reporting truthfully, her message must be incorrect. And then principals would think that she is actually uninformed and pay her zero thereafter, which is the worst payments that the, uninformed, that the informed type could get. And hence, the, the informed type never finds any profitable deviation. All right, and hence, if we want to characterize equilibrium, uh, all we need, and because you know principals are, are myopically uh, optimizing in response to the expert strategy, and we do not have the concern about you know the informed experts' incentive to deviate. Any equilibrium must be characterized by the uninformed type strategy, which is some agreeing function. And this agreeing function is just is just going to determine the uninformed type's agreeing probability in each arrival. How is it? Well, this function is going to take the reputation p in the arrival and the state belief in the arrival to a probability of agreeing uh, in that arrival, all right? And you know, we know that this suffices because we have shown that in any equilibrium, the, the, the uninformed expert strategy is Markov in these two beliefs. Okay, and conversely, if you, if for every agreeing function alpha, if we fix the uninformed expert's behavior as given by this agreeing function alpha, there always exists an equilibrium among other players where the, uninfor where the informed type does not deviate from AAA reporting and the principles myopically optimize. And moreover, in every such equilibrium, at the end of each arrival with reputation P, the uninformed type's payoff is just, again, a function of P parameterized by you know, the agreeing function alpha that we fixed. So the task of characterizing equilibrium now is just to solve for the best uh, agreeing function that the uninformed expert plays. Effectively, the, we have to find the uninformed expert's best response to the informed expert's behavior, which is you know, solving this uh, program star. And good news, or rather standard, that you know, the, the maximum in star is achieved. Uh, so we, there actually exists the best response. And um, so what I'm going to do now is I want to and so we have an equilibrium. So what I'm going to do now is I want to um, look at what this equilibrium would look like um, when, when I'm going to say that you know, this equilibrium is characterized by some optimal agreeing function alpha bar. OK? Now, to understand what is alpha, you know, uh, this agreeing function alpha bar, notice that in any equilibrium, or in the, in the equilibrium characterized by the agreeing function alpha bar, in any arrival on paths with beliefs p mu, the agreeing probability alpha bar p mu must satisfy you know, the, the following monster, which is actually the uninformed experts incentive constraint. What it says really is that on the left side, this is the, uh, this is the uninformed types continuation payoff uh, upon agreeing minus the continuation payoff upon disagreeing. And what this in incentive constraint says is, well, if if the expert is agreeing, for sure, it better be the case that agreeing is more attractive than disagreeing, and hence the difference is non-negative. Likewise, if the probability is interior, that means the expert is mixing, it better, be, it better be the case that the uninformed expert is indifferent, and hence the difference is zero. Finally, if alpha bar is zero, 
uh, well, it better be the case that disagreeing is, is at least uh, weakly more attractive than agreeing for the uninformed expert. All right, what is crucial on this slide is if the reputation P is positive, this alpha bar P mu is unique. Well, why is that? Imagine you know, the uninformed expert is choosing a high agreeing probability, alpha bar P mu. What happens is then a, a correctly disagreeing message is going to signal a lot to principles that this expert is informed. And there's a large reputation gain by uh, correctly disagreeing. And hence, the uninformed expert will have an incentive to lower the agreeing probability to, to capture those reputation gain. Likewise, if I'm choosing as an uninformed expert too low, uh, agreeing probability, that means then that a correctly agreeing message is going to signal to the principles that this expert is informed uh, to a large extent. And hence, the uninformed type to capture this reputation again, she would increase the alpha bar a little bit um, to capture that gain. So in, in equilibrium, this alpha bar must be determined to balance the probability that the report is going to be correct and also the resulting reputation. Now, on the other hand, if the reputation is zero, if the reputation, if the reputation is zero, the uninformed expert's future payoff is going to be zero. And in that case, it doesn't really matter anymore what the uninformed expert does. So with that loss, we can just set you know, um, uh, the agreeing probability to be a half when the uninformed expert's reputation is zero. OK. So on the other hand, for the principles, in its arrival with public beliefs P mu, the principal first they are going to match the action, his action with an agreeing report for sure. Why is that? Well, even absent expert advice, the principal already thinks that the agreeing state is more likely to be correct. And an agreeing report by the expert just reinforces that belief. And hence the principal is happy to match his action with, a, with an agreeing report. In contrast, the principal does not always match his action with a disagreeing report. And he only does so if and only if the following you know, incentive constraint holds. And these could be simplified to this object, namely when the agreeing probability is sufficiently high, higher than some cutoff kappa. Now, why is that? Well, from the, principal, from the principal's perspective, if he knew that the expert is informed, then he is happy to you know, match his action with the report. But if he knew that the expert is uninformed, uh, the, the principal would be better off dismissing the disagreeing report and just choose the agreeing action. Because the principal knows that you know, um, uh, the uninformed expert actually knows nothing more. And he should follow the public state belief. And now in the game, well, with repetition P, the principal is not sure uh, where, what, what type the expert is. And hence, the principal is only going to choose his action to match the disagreeing report when he's pretty confident or sufficiently confident that this disagreeing report is not sent by the uninformed expert, which is equivalent to saying the uninformed expert's agreeing probability is high enough. Okay. Now, with these observations in mind, we can formulate, you know, we can formally, you know, state the equilibrium characterization result. Um, first, let's define you know, a crisis correspondence, which is a, a set you know, given um, the reputation P, the set of state beliefs such that the agreeing probability is low. So this is the condition where uh, if, if the agreeing probability satisfies this condition, then you know, principles are going to dismiss uh, the expert's um, disagreeing report, OK? Hence, we have the following proposition. The function alpha bar characterizes the essentially unique equilibrium. In the equilibrium, um, in each arrival with beliefs P mu, if the state belief is in this crisis correspondence, so this crisis set, the principal is going to choose the agreeing action irrespective of the expert's report. In contrast, if the state belief does not belong to this uh, crisis set, then the principal matches his action with the report. All right, so we have discussed you know, uh, 
all this, except that we haven't, you know, talked about why this is an essentially unique equilibrium. By essentially unique, I meant that all equilibria are outcome equivalent. Okay, and why is this the case? Well, we have seen that if the representation is positive, the agreeing probability is unique. And hence, in, in such a rifle, the uh, expert strategy is going to pin down a unique distribution of the principal's actions. On the other hand, well, if the reputation is uh, zero, no matter what the, what the expert says or no matter what the uninformed expert strategy is, the principal's action is going to be unique and it's going to be the agreeing action because the principal does not trust you know, or, you know, the, 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 the expert's advice. And hence the equilibrium is essentially unique. All right. Um, now, in the following, I'm going to doubt, you know, I'm going to ex explore in more detail the structure of alpha bar and C. Okay, that's going to give us, you know, to 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 understand some more economics behind the crisis. Um, first, if you know, one interpretation of alpha bar when alpha bar is less than one is that she ga she gambles for reputation. Why? Well, from, from the uninformed expert's perspective, disagreeing is more likely to be incorrect um, and will re reveal her type. And so this is bad for the uninformed expert, but if she, if she is still doing this to disagree, then it must be the case that if disagreeing turns out to be correct, there will be a large reputation gain. And in this sense, she gambles for reputation. Okay. Now here's the proposition about the structure of alpha bar. First, given any beliefs P mu, um, alpha bar is always bigger than one half. Now, why is that? Well, this reflects the incentive by the uninformed expert to pool with the informed type. From her perspective, um, the current state is more, always more likely to be agreeing and hence an informed expert would have agreed with a larger chance. And hence to mimic the informed type, the uninformed expert is gonna choose this agreeing probability to be larger than a half. Now, moreover, there will be two further properties that I can explain in words, but for your welfare, I'm gonna do it in picture. Um, so the first property is, you know, a lower state belief, there will be more gambling. So just consider the following picture, which is basically me and Mathematica numerically solving this equilibrium. Um, what this equilibrium plus is the agreeing probability in the arrival with reputation one fifth against the possible state beliefs mu from a half to one. Okay, now you can see when the state belief is close to one, there's no gambling. The uninformed expert agrees for sure. Because with this state belief, the uninformed expert thinks, well, um, the, if, I, if I gamble or if I disagree, it's very likely that the message is going to be incorrect. And hence it's not worth it to gamble. On the other hand, if the state belief is very close to one half or is, 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 is smaller, then you know, disagreeing is considerably uh, more likely to be correct. And hence, you know, the uninformed expert starts to gamble more. Okay. And hence the agreeing probability falls. Now, the second property is that if the expert has a lower reputation, there will be more gambling. Now, by now, this should be the intuition should be straightforward because. When, if the expert has a lower reputation, uh, there's, a high, there's a larger reputation gain by gambling. And if we look at the familiar picture again, and if we you know, uh, decrease the reputation from one fifth to one tenth, the agreeing function is gonna fall, namely the expert is gonna uh, gamble more, okay? Conversely, if I increase the reputation to a half, the agreeing function increases and meaning that the uninformed expert gamble less. Okay. Now, in terms of the structure of C, which pins down where the uh, principles dismiss the, the, the expert, we can, we can state the result as follows. So for every reputation P, the unit state belief one always belongs to the crisis set. Why is that? Well, if the principles are sure that the state is going to be agreeing, there's no point in listening to the expert. Moreover, you know, again, uh, the structure of C is going to satisfy three properties that I can explain in words, but you know, again, I'm going to do it in picture. So the first two 
properties can be summarized as a statement that says the, the, the set C excludes extreme inconclusive state beliefs. Now I'm going to do it again in the picture, you know, the family uh, picture by now, the same agreeing function, a same agreeing probability replication one fifth against the state belief. Now I'm going to plot the cutoff kappa on top of the um, alpha bar. And we know that if alpha bar is smaller than this cutoff, we would have the principles dismissing the expert advice. And this is captured by uh, you know, the red region. So the, given these state beliefs, the principal is going to dismiss expert, expert advice. Now, one interesting observation of this picture is that this region does not contain the high enough interior state beliefs. Why is that? Why is that? Well, given a high belief, state belief, the principal knows that the uninformed expert also shares the same state belief. And the uninformed expert is not going to gamble, or it's, got, it's going to gamble very little. And hence, the principal is going to be pretty happy to follow the, the expert advice. Um, on the other hand, if we, uh, it, the, the, the set also ex excludes low enough state beliefs. Why is that? Well, if the state belief is so low, first, the principal is going to think um, the state is likely to have, have changed. And so the, even, the, uh, even the informed type is likely to send a disagreeing message. And hence, you know, the, the, the principles are happy to follow the expert advice. It is in the middle region where the principles think that, well, the state is pretty likely to be the same as the last state. And the uninformed expert is pretty likely to gamble. And hence, given this intermediate state beliefs, namely the, when the public information about the state is not too high or it's not too good, the principle is going to dismiss the disagreeing report by the expert. All right. Now this concludes, oh, actually one more. Um, with a higher reputation P, so this is the last property of the proposition. With a higher reputation P, there's the, the set of crisis, uh, the, set, the crisis set is going to be smaller. Well, why is that? Again, if we increase the reputation from one fifth to one half, um, from the principal's perspective, they're going to think, well, the expert is more likely to be informed and hence her advice is correct. And also the uninformed expert is less likely to gamble because there's less reputation gain. And hence the, the principal is happy with these two forces, the principal is happy to follow expert advice when choosing an action. All right. Now with the, this completes the, you know, the basic characterization of the equilibrium. Now I'm going to look, turn to implications. All right, and in particular, um, the implications are going to be centered around the crisis of expertise. And you know, just to just to think of it in a in a concrete concrete way, I'm going to define a crisis of expertise as a history of play of the game, at which the public believes P mu satisfy the condition that the state belief is in the crisis set, conditional on the expert being informed. And hence, when I cry, when, when, whenever we have the crisis, of, whenever the principal arrives during a crisis of expertise, the principal is going to dismiss the informed expert's correct advice. Okay. In the equilibrium. Now, the plan of attack of structuring this, you know, this last section of implications, I'm going to. I'm going to go use the equilibrium characterization to shed light on the two motivating questions, namely how the crisis affect the informed experts and whether the crisis is actually due to the abundance of public information. All right, and so, um, and finally, I'm going to turn to policy implications. All right, so in particular, um, to, to address the first question, I'm going to look at the informed types equilibrium payoff and, and some long run predictions. Um, and to answer the second question, I'm going to shed light on you know, the two phases of public information in, uh, in a model. All right, so now let's turn to the, you know, the first part about the informed experts. In particular, a priori, um, given that they are the informed expert are reporting triply, it's a priori unclear how the uninformed expert gambling is going to affect their payoffs. All right, and so actually, the informed type also enjoys a higher reputation. Or you know, uh, more formally, the informed experts 
payoff at the end of each arrival is also strictly increasing uh, in her reputation. Now, why is this? Well, this is basically because of the wage, um, because of the fact that the wage, equilibrium wage, is strictly increasing in the um, uh, reputation, given the uninformed experts uh, strategy. Why? Well, with a high reputation, the principal is going to think first again, the expert is more likely to be informed. And second, the uninformed expert is less likely to gamble. And hence, principals have a higher willingness to pay the expert. And hence, the expert's uh, value is going to be higher. All right. And second, the informed type builds her reputation over time, which is just to say, well, because the informed types is always reporting correctly in the equilibrium, the principal's belief about her, 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 her type being informed is going to increase over time. All right. And um, this is just you know, a formal statement of, of what I just said. Um, what is important from an applied perspective here is these two results shed light on why, despite there are you know, ample concerns about the crisis of expertise, uh, reputable experts who has consistently issued correct forecasts, um, they are competitively sought after you know, in markets for financial advice, in entrepreneurship, uh, in business consulting. All right, in particular, the fact that the informed expert builds her reputation over time implies that the crisis is temporary. All right, so um, namely in every equilibrium, when, when the time goes on far enough, uh, if we pick the state belief and the, and the reputation at that time, the state belief is not going to be in the crisis set with a large probability. And again, because the reputation by that time would be, would be high enough, and so, cons uh, and so principals are happy to follow the expert advice. Okay, um, now this goes back to, 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 to Benson's question is, well, what, what, whether the crisis is gonna be temporary if, uh, if there are multiple informed experts. Now, if we, are, if we are in a setting where there are many informed experts and um, these informed experts are also able to build their reputation over time, then again, the, the crisis are gonna be temporary. Okay, now, at the same time, the principles also learn about the uninformed type in terms of the long-run predictions. Uh, again, this is just a formal statement of saying, well, the uninformed expert could be correct uh, by luck for some time uh, and, and her reputation rises until she gets an incorrect message and it's wrong. And, 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 and it, when the, and the incorrect message is gonna reveal her type and the reputation is gonna stay at zero forever. All right, and so, um, sorry, Bernard, how, how long do I have? We have about eight minutes, eight, nine minutes, maybe 10. All right, excellent. Okay, so now I want to mention then one example of such short-term reputation building. Um, so this is Raul Pell. And, you know, Raul Pell, what he did is that he successfully predicted the uh, 2008 financial crisis. Now, and then he became pretty famous. So he has a good reputation at that time. And then he go on and say, well, you know, I'm going to predict that in 2012, we are gonna witness the biggest banking crisis in, in world history. And of course, if we have been living in the same universe, this event does not occur. And, at, and then the financial advisory firm Fastery basically picks out Raul Pell as an example and writes something that is captured you know, uh, in, in, in the equilibrium. The advisory firm says, well, beware of these financial media spouting predictions. When they're right, it's more, li it's like, it's, it's more likely that only because they're lucky. All right, now with, you know, after this, we're gonna move to the second part um, and, and talk about, you know, the role of public information, whether the crisis is due to the abundance of public information. And then I'm gonna move to policy implications. All right, now on the one hand, now what do I mean by the two phases of public information? Now on the one hand, um, public information facilitates principles learning in a model, right? The principles learn about the state, which helps with their decision-making. They also learn about the expert's type and this learning about type, as we have seen it, improves the principal's use of expert advice and the public information or the past outcomes. It also improves the quality of expert advice by, by mitigating um, uninformed experts gambling. On the other hand, 
public information also facilitates the uninformed expert's learning. First, she learns how to better appear informed, resulting in the equilibrium where she's more likely to agree than to disagree. And because of this alpha bar being bigger than one half, the equilibrium features an endogenously arising uh, contrarian rewarding convention. Namely, in each arrival, uh, a correctly disagreeing report is going to give the uninformed expert a higher continuation payoff than a continuation payoff upon correctly agreeing. Because you know, a disagreeing message is, you know, is more informative about to the principles that the expert is actually informed. And so this, of course, gives incentives for the uninformed expert to gamble at the expense of the principles. And precisely, the uninformed expert learns how to gamble or how to send a disagreeing message to, ex to at the expense of the principles uh, from you know learning by learning from the public information. Okay, so you know just to briefly mention these uh, contrarians or these these conventions that reward successful contrarians are pretty common. Um, they often appear in the form of implicit incentives, as in a model, where if you have a high reputation, you get high, you get you get paid more. And um, in practice, analysts, entrepreneurs, business consultants, their careers typically prosper upon correctly contrarian course against the the uh, the public beliefs. At the same time, the pattern where experts gamble more with lower reputation is also very present in uh, for financial analysts. Um, these analysts, you know, at lower tier brokerage houses are documented to make more contrarian calls for their, for their career advancement. Now, the results I've talked about speak, actually speak to the concerns in the re retail financial advice industry. Um, now, to give you a con context, let me introduce Patricia Russell. Now, she appeared from nowhere in 2019 on LinkedIn. Now, she is, you know, a famous certified financial planner at that time. And you know, as you see, she receives pretty good education, and her career is impressive. Her financial advice was published, you know, in the top uh, popular media outlets: New York Times, Business Insiders, you name it. No matter, how, no, he's even though her her career record is so impressive, there's one problem: that she's fake. Actually, it's not clear whether Patricia Russell is, you know, is actually real, uh, a real person. Okay, and so the discovery of Russell actually uh, alarms the, 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 the uh, society and, and leads to discovery of several more fake advices in the, in, the, in the industry. And this raises concerns that, you know, these fake experts damage the value of genuine financial help. And what my results suggest is that, well, actually the internet, social media, public information, they do help these fake experts to spring to life. And because they learn how to how to you know appear to be informed, in the beginning they take more risks to attract attention, and over time, if, if they are lucky and not exposed, they would become more and more you know reporting what is conventional and repeat the public information. And nonetheless, the damage to genuine informed advisors dissipates in the long run. Okay, um, now despite the two phases of public information. Recent political campaigns, consumer groups, they have consistently advocated the need uh, to equip advisees with better public information. And the idea is that we should protect advisees from low quality expert advice. Now, my results support these advocates, but for a different reason. As we have seen, if we improve uh, public information about a state or the type, it's going to discipline the uninformed experts gambling. And hence, there's a complementarity effect here because the better public information is going to improve the quality of expert advice as well. And hence, um, the following policies can be effective for alleviating the crisis of expertise. We could have more frequent auditing of experts. So imagine we increase the arrival intensity of the principles from one to a very large number. Now, some of these principles are going to be in, uh, are just the principles in our baseline model, but some others are auditors. And if the arrival intensity is so high, then principles on average is going to arrive with a pretty high state belief. And that's going to mitigate the uninformed experts gambling. Second, we could have more production of public information as the advocates suggested. Uh, imagine, you know, 
uh, an independent Poisson process that arrives again randomly over time and arrives frequently. And whenever it, there's an arrival, the state is publicly reviewed. Again, then with this production of public information, principles are going to arrive with you know, pretty high state belief on average. And again, this mitigates uninformed gambling. Finally, we can also think about you know, uh, improving the standards for expert certifications. In a model, this would be you know, increasing the prior reputation, P0, so that you know, principals are more confident about the expert's ability. And as we see with a high reputation, there's going to be less you know, gain by gambling. And hence, it's going to, again, mitigate the uninformed expert's gambling. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip the last part, which talks about you know, uh, comparative statics on the, on the state volatility. And let me summarize. Um, the crisis of expertise has attracted considerable attention in recent times amid recent you know, technological advancement. Um, in my model, the crisis is an equilibrium phenomenon where decision makers dismiss the correct advice by informed expert and act solely on the basis of their noisy public information. And this is due to the, the, the fact that access to public information allows uninformed expert to spring to life like Patricia Russell. And they, advise, and they give advice at the expense of the principles or the decision, decision makers. And what I show is that the crisis is actually due to the lack, but not the abundance of high quality public information. Because it is then when uninformed experts have strong incentives to gamble. And I'll also discuss you know, some policies that potentially can improve uh, public information about the state of the type, which um, could help alleviating the crisis. Uh, and these policies rest on the, the observation that there is a complementarity effect, that better public information is also going to improve the quality of expert advice. And let me finish then by saying thank you for tuning in. <laughs>